Hello and welcome to What Are You Saying? Hashtag Ways, where we talk about topics in the news as it affects us all. I am Musayo Mesali, and today, Angie is in the studio with me today. <laughs> I read the Australia. <laughs> you sound like it. Right? I hmm. don't either. Trust over, this, you. over the weekend, it was not a funny ordeal. I I just, from the show, like, literally, I couldn't go home. Like, I was, it was like, um, temperature from here to there. Oh, I was wow. feeling so feverish and all of that. Sorry. I had to take some medications that got me hallucinating. <laughs> hallucinating? I'm telling you. Okay. I've not felt like that in a very long time. I think the way, the way I felt over the weekend, I, I, it was like 2012, I think, that I felt that way. Maybe 20, 2012 or 2015, I'm not sure now what year was it when I went um, with my mom to the UK and I was feeling like, you know how you're all fully kitted up in the winter jacket, yet if you felt like you were like naked Freezing. in the snow. Yeah. I was feeling the cold inside my bone. Mm. Mm, sorry. It's not been, it's not been, uh, I've not had that in a long time. So I think it's just accumulated stress and all of that, but I think I'll be fine. I'm sure you would. I'm I sure don't have you. a choice. <laughs> I'm here, aren't I? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so how are you? How's your day? Um, good, good. Um, I had a good weekend, but um, today just started off. I started feeling a bit, you know, funny today. But you know. this with you. <laughs> Amen. I think Jola is joining us via Zoom. Jola, are you there? Okay, she's not there yet. Okay, today's my mom's birthday. Let me quickly give her a oh. shout out. Before, because I'm sure she's watching. Mommy, happy birthday. And my dad's birthday was on Saturday. Happy birthday. They follow each other. Mommy and daddy. <laughs> I love you guys. All right, so um, tonight in conjunction with, um, of course, Enough is Enough, like we always do every Monday, we examine the historical timeline of presidential election petitions in Nigeria and look into the need for election petitions to be sped up and completed before a candidate is sworn in. Um, so let me come to two, um, because we have a couple that we would like to run through. Um, let me come to which one now? Give me a second, let me find it. All right, so despite the ongoing case, it, uh, of course, that is happening with the um, presidential election tribunal, Bola Metinum was sworn in on the 29th of May. Um, that's on Monday, 29th of May. Um, in 1999, Obasanjo Obasanjo declared when Falaye sued and lost. The length of the dispute was about 32 days. While in 2003, Olushegun Obasanjo versus Muhammadu Buhari and um, Odumego Ojuku. Obasanjo was declared winner, Buhari runner up, and Ojuku third place. Um, of course, they sued and they lost at the Supreme Court. The length of the dispute was over two years. I mean, when I see this, I'm like, okay, let's just take a step. <laughs> and do we have the strength, you know, to be able to go all the long haul, right? I mean, so what do you have for us, NJ? Oh, well, um... I know that in 2007, it was Umaru um, Musa Yaradwa versus Mohamed Buhari and Atiku Abubakar. Hmm. And uh, Yaradwa was declared winner, and Buhari and Atiku sued and lost at the Supreme Court, and that lasted for a year. Oh, wow. And somewhere down the line, you have 2011, where it was good luck, Ebele Jonathan versus Muhammad Buari. Jonathan was declared the winner, and Buari sued and lost. Why are you don't for this game? <laughs> <laughs> he sued and lost, and the length of that dispute was over seven, seven months. months. So you see that over the years, it's, it's reducing. It's not even that. Nobody actually complied to the, you know, there's a, there, I think it's an 80 day or what's the turnaround time? I think it's 180 days. 180 days before you, you know, before um, swearing in and out. So none of these cases have even met the, you know, the, the what's it called? The, the, the supposed standard. I'm telling you. You know? And then when we go down um, to 2015, we have Muhammad Dubuari versus Good Luck Jonathan. Mm. And Buhari was declared winner. Jonathan did not contest that election, uh, the election results that mm -hmm. year. So okay. 
that's what I had so far. And it's interesting because in 2015, I, and I think, you know, we would have seen somewhat like a repeat of what happened in 2015 in 2023. But we didn't see that because, again, if you remember, the elections, it was almost like people got to that point where they were just tired. Yeah. You know, of course, the narrative was that um, then President Jonathan was not, you know, um, he, was, he was allowing a lot of people to, to eat, eat our treasury, you know, like empty our treasury. He wasn't like firm, you know, and all of that. So under his watch, a lot of things were happening, corrupt practices and all of that. But, you know, he was the first person to even call then, then president-elect um, um, Wari to congratulate him. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean, mm -hmm. um, Jola, you're here. Oh, yes, I am. Welcome. Good evening. Hi, good evening. Hi, Jola. Thank you. Um, okay, so continuing from um, where you stopped, MJ, uh, in 2019, um, there was a Muhammad Buhari versus Atiku Abubakar. Buhari declared winner, Atiku sued and lost, and length of, um, length of time for disputes was for five months. Um, in 2023, of course, the very popular 2023, um, Bola Ahmed Tinubu versus Peter Obi and Atiku Abubakar. Tinubu declared winner, Obi and Atiku are seeking cancellation of the result. Hearings began May 30th and are expected to earn July the 3rd. 2023. Of course, um, the tribunal, um, as we mentioned earlier in one of our um, advocacy series, was that um, 180, there's a 180 day deadline to rule on election petitions. Having said that, I mean, it is too long. The 180 day rule is actually just too long. Um, tribunals should be completed before elected candidates are sworn in. Justice delayed is definitely justice denied. Mm. All right, so I mean, mm. thanks to Enough Enough AM um, is Enough for always updating us. Part of our, our what's it called, um, would I call it a mandate for us on ways every Monday is to educate the citizens because, again, we realize that it's not so much of um, the things that are happening that is really affecting us as a people, it's more of our ignorance. So it's important that we get informed. So if you want to know more about your elected officials, you know, um, go to, just chat hello to 017006381. That's a chat box for um, the office of the citizen. It's very important that you say hello, chat, know your representatives, know your local government councillors, your local government chairman, uh, state house of assembly members, House of Representative members, your senators, your governors, and your, of course, the duties and the functions of these offices. So you are clear as to directing uh, whatever challenges or problems that you think, you know, you want to, you know, um, challenge, ch probably dispute or whatever. You need to channel it to the right quarters. All right. So thank you, um, ladies. So we'll take a break now. When we come back from that break, oh, okay. We are actually supposed to say what our quote for today is. So, I mean, in line with what we're discussing today, here's what we found as today's quote. So, if you just communicate, you can get by. But if you communicate skillfully, you can work miracles. And this is from Jim Rohn. Um, he is a speaker and an entrepreneur. So, enter, um, transformative communication, I believe. Um, is the opportunity to experience another way of communicating based on development of qualities um, such as empathy, responsibility, um, assertiveness, and leadership. So today we'll be discussing transformative leadership uh, through communication with Toastmaster Messi George and um, distinguished Toastmaster Kubi we're younger, but we'll do all of that first. Let's quickly run on the break. When we come back, we'll see what we found in the news. You are still watching Ways Now. United Nations designated 5th of June as World Environment Day to highlight that um, the protection and the health of the environment is a major issue 
which affects the well-being of people and economic development throughout the world. The celebration of this day provides us with an opportunity to broaden the basis of an enlightened op um, opinion and responsible conduct by individuals, enterprises, and communities in preserving and enhancing the environment. This, I don't think there's any way to coin the world, the environment, and how it um, impacts us. Um, for as much as you can, wherever you have the opportunity, do things, right, that, um, that enhances the environment as opposed to depleting it. I saw Tony Lumelu today, and um, I think he's Dupe Olu Shola um, planting a tree. So a lot of people would use this day to plant trees. A lot of people would, you know, do some level of advocacy and all of that. So if you can, try as much as possible to avoid litters. I mean, I see this all the time. I, I wish there would be a law that would come back to Nigeria where we would stop to throw, what's it called, pet bottles or plastic trash. trash, you know, off through our windows. I mean, if we do that alone, I know how much it's going to help with our environment, especially when it comes to issues around flooding and all of that. So um, in any way you can, try as much as possible to, um, what's it called, preserve your environment and do the right thing when given the opportunity. So let's quickly run off to what we found. NJ, what did you find for us? Um, so I have a story here that an estimated 275 people were killed in a horrific train accident in India over the weekend. And uh, officials say this is due to bad signals. You know, um, survivors, apparently uh, the train you know, went off the track and hit another, collided with another train. And, um, you know, the population of people in India that depend on their train, their rail system is over 20 million. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine, um, apart from the horrific accident, you're thinking about how other people are going to be affected, how traders are going to be affected, how individuals are going to be affected, how they'll get to work, because now, you know, they have to re clear the area, first of all, find everyone, because there, there's still a lot of people, missing people. Some people have been able to, um, you know, recognize or to find the bodies of their family members. And um, some people have, are yet to, you know... Literally, when I saw this video, like, literally, I thought, could this be a movie? Because it was so unreal for me when I saw it. It's, it was uh, so unreal, like the amount of, there was just so much chaos, you know, different collision. Now, I think at some point they had said it was about 288, and they now brought down the numbers because they counted some bodies twice. This is really sad. It's very sad. Really yeah. sad. I can imagine. Really sad. And you know the population in India, so it's, it's not, a lot. it's really sad. Our heart goes out. Look at the man crying about his um, brother that just newly married and all of that. Our heart goes out to everyone right now. Family, families, kids. friends. I don't. I don't even kids. know how, you know, to take this news. Honestly, it's so sad. So so sad. All right, Dela, your story. Okay. Um. So. Um. Well, on subsidy matters. Um. NLC Sean's meeting with FG CUC six pay rise. That's the headline news. Um. So um, about last um, week, Wednesday, um, NLC and the federal government initiated um, talks around the subsidy. And um, I mean, um, this has um, impacted on citizens and um, fuel um, price hike. So um, there was a meeting between the government officials and labor leaders, and this ended in a deadlock. And um, as a result of... Um, NNPC, you know, releasing petrol pump price to um, between 488 and 557. Of course, um, um, some NLC um, leader had mentioned that um, the federal government's officials or, you know, people that were supposed to have talks with them, they were, they were supposed to have reconvened um, yesterday, but um, they did not um, come to the table. They were not interested in um, negotiation or having a conversation with the federal government until um, the price had um, gone back to pre-May 29. Um, that, um, that was the only condition for which they would sit down and then have a talk with them. However, mm -hmm. 
the Trade Union Con um, Congress of Nigeria yesterday met with government officials, but the meeting was also inconclusive as both parties resolved to continue talks on the issue tomorrow. Bearing in mind that um, NLC mobilizes for a strike on Wednesday and um, has urged um, all um, civil societies and um, other... Um, I don't know, whoever, you know, to mobilize and everybody should uh, be very involved in the strike. I, I, I don't know. It's just, um, I think, for me, I, I don't even know if this is a step in the right direction in terms of the strike. I always feel that um, a conversation, we should always look for ways to have conversations. Well, I think it's even good that we're having a conversation around communication today. Because I think, yeah. again, every time it seems... We cannot always be... You understand? Right. Like, why, why can we not, you know... So there is a problem. We know that there's a big scam around subsidy. Yeah. Everybody has agreed, right? Mm. But you see, the, the way and manner, and you know, of communicating this problem, this challenge goes a long way in finding solutions to it. Now, look at it. I, I, in fact, we are going to discuss this fuel matter again tomorrow because I need to understand what the landing cost of fuel is. Even though NMPC putting the price at 488, right, to five whatever, the, mm. the brand, what arrives that, I mean, like, what is the calculation that got us to that arrival of that, that number, right? I mean, you know that everyone is suffering. So can we also try as a government to say, you know what, what are the reasons that the prices will land at, a, at an expensive price? Can we take off all those costs? Do you understand? And let us even see what it can come to. We, we're not even seeing that body language of, you know what, we actually understand the pain. Let me not even start with the fair matter, because if I start that matter, we will not live here today. I just want to quickly say that Johesu um, suspends strike for 21 days after meeting the president, Tinubu. Um, so this is Joint Health Se um, Sector Union and Assembly of Healthcare Professional Association. Um, they've suspended their indefinite strike um, for 21 days. And this was announced um, after the leadership had met with the president. So the acting National Secretary, um, Matthew Ajiro, too, in a text said, sent to the correspondent, said that the president promised to approve their demands. Like, we have started it all over again. It is well. We'll take a break. When we come back from the break, let's discuss communication. Stay with us. We'll be right back.